The two F-18s touched down at Williamtown Base near Newcastle this afternoon after a 15-hour flight across the Pacific. There was no victory roll, but the sentiment was there nevertheless as the two F-18s came in towards the coast at Nelson Bay, just north of Newcastle. In the centre, their US Air Force refueller, a converted DC-10, and flanking them, six Mirage escorts from Williamtown Air Base. There, it seemed everyone had turned out to welcome these long-awaited modern weapons of war. There too, the first F-18, delivered just a few weeks ago from the assembly line in Melbourne. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal David Evans, was chauffeur flown from Canberra in a Mirage, excited, but concerned now that the government should also provide airborne tankers for refuelling. And then the fly past. Impressive. Even more so, the touchdown. It was 15 hours since the Hornets left California, an endurance record for fighter aircraft, they believe. Each F-18 was refuelled 13 times, though all weren't necessary. Formalities were still required. You know you're in Australia when the insecticide spray comes out. But then for Wing Commander Brian Robinson and Flight Lieutenant Gus Larad in the lead aircraft, the welcome they really wanted. And if you're wondering how the four men lasted for 15 hours, the answer is they'd been on a high-protein, low-residue diet for some days. Apparently it works. And so, they say, does the F-18. Engines and the avionics system, really good radars and uh, highly reliable engines. Amid all the celebrations today, just one note of gloom, and that's the cost of these aircraft. The original contract price was for more than $3,000 million, but that was back in 1982. The way the exchange rates have gone, they could now cost double that. At Williamtown, John Gatfield, National 9 News. Special. And the RAF's answer was to stage a non-stop flight from California by the only two American-built aircraft the RAF will be getting. The other 73 will be assembled at Avalon in Victoria. On hand to greet the F-18s was the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Evans, who did admit that in spite of spending some five billion current dollars on the F-18, the RAF would like early warning aircraft and air-to-air -air refuelers to make the most of the fighter. Well, half a system is no good, really. You either have a full air defence system or you don't have an effective system. Uh, we've got the makings of a magnificent air defence system, but we're lacking a couple of essentials that everyone knows. Without them, we haven't got a system. Can the government be persuaded to get the uh, airborne tankers? I don't think they need to be persuaded. I think uh, the present Defence Minister is uh, very perceptive. He knows what we need. He can see the need. But, of course, he can't manufacture many. On the flight from the United States, the F-18s hooked up to a giant KC-10 flying fuel station no fewer than 13 times. After a traditional fly past with an escort of mirages, the F-18s landed, ending what is probably the longest flight ever made by a fighter aircraft. For the four pilots in the two dual-seater F-18 trainers, the waiting crowd at Williamtown was a welcome sight and a long-awaited reunion with their families. The pilots have been in the United States training as instructors. First to greet squadron leader Laurie Evans of Nelson Bay were his three children and his wife Trish. Squadron leader Evans and the other three pilots, Flight Lieutenant Jerry O'Brien, Wing Commander Brian Robinson and Flight Lieutenant Gus Larrard, were all obviously glad of the chance to stretch their legs, but they still had to complete customs declarations like any other tourist. Their task now will be to train pilots at Williamtown to fly the F-18. By this time next year, the base will have 14 of the superfighters.